In this PowerPoint, we're going to talk about forecasting. And you'll be able to see uh, this information presented in your text in chapter 14 and 15. Now, let's talk about what forecasting is. Uh, forecasting is simply the process of predicting a future event. It is the underlying basis of all business decisions. Now, even though uh, on this picture you see a fortune teller predicting the future, this is, of course, not what we do when we're making forecasts. Forecast is a scientific method used to project future events. Now, what is a good forecast? A good forecast has these, ele these elements. Timely, very reliable, accurate, or as accurate as possible, meaningful, written, and very easy to use. It must be user-friendly. And most importantly, it, it's an, a good forecast is cost-effective. If a forecast is not able to save a company revenue, then it's, very, it's not a very reliable forecast. There are several types of forecasts. There's qualitative forecasts, there's a quantitative forecast, and then there are associative models that are used to forecast. A qualitative forecast is a forecast that uses subjective inputs. Uh, this simply means that the data used has no historical basis. For example, if I was starting a, a new company, uh, and I was selling a product that had not yet been tested in the market uh, in a in a new market. Uh, at this point, all I could do is make a guesstimation on what demand will be. So I would have to prepare for what I thought the product would be able to sell. And of course, I would base it on some factors uh, such as similar products sold, the area in which I'm, I'm selling, uh, the perceived demand for this particular product. Those are all very subjective inputs that I would use to predict demand. Um, and so a qualitative forecast uh, has no historical basis to base numbers. Now, a quantitative forecast is just the opposite. The for quantitative forecast use only historical data in order to project future events. And then there's associative models that are used in order to project future events as well. And this is also known as regression analysis. You'll see regression analysis in chapter 7 and chapter 16, uh, two chapters that I'm, that I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time on because you will not see them uh, on your exams or uh, in any of your projects in this particular course. Uh, regression analysis is very detailed. Um, it's uh, a great science and a great tool to use if this is a part of your normal function in business. I do recommend that you look at these chapters, uh, read these chapters, uh, and that you, you, you gr try to grasp an understanding of what regression analysis entails. Uh, however, uh, this will not be something that we focus on in this particular course uh, just due to time. And so for the basis of this particular class, the model that I want us to focus on and to really understand uh, are quantitative models. Um, and we're going to look at historical results in order to project future results. Now, smoothing techniques. Uh, there are several types of smoothing techniques. Um, and smoothing is simply the capturing of a particular pattern over time. And in this course, we're going to look at three patterns that we want to capture in order to project future events. One, a moving average, also called a simple moving average, a weighted moving average. As you see in blue, this is not in your text. Uh, so this is something that will talk about and you're going to have to really take your cues from this slide because it's not something that you're going to see in your text and exponential smoothing. Now there's two forms discussed in your text of smoothing techniques. Your moving average and your exponential smoothing and I'm going to go into depth into those uh, in future slides. Now moving averages. Moving averages are simple techniques used to project a future event based on 
a past pattern and it uses the average of those patterns to tell me what the next set of patterns will look like. A moving, a moving average says that I'm going to look at one, two, three, four, five, maybe six periods. And of course, that number can go on and on. And I'm going to project the next one, two, three, four, five, six periods based on the averages of those last periods. A weighted moving average will tell me that even though I'm going to look at all of these these series over time I'm going to assign a higher weight or a heavier weight to the most recent data because my projection is that my future will look more like my most recent past and you'll see this very shortly on this slide we're focusing on a simple moving average now, as you will see on this slide, actual sales data has been given. Now, this actual sales data, of course, happens after your projection. So right now, you would not know what the actual sales are. All you would have are projections. So on this particular slide, what's being asked is, Please predict for us the month of April based on a three-month moving average. So the data that we've been given is January, February, and March. So we're saying, you know that actual sales in January was 10, actual sales in February was 12, actual sales in March was 13. So what do you project April to be? A simple moving average says simply, I'm going to add up the first three months I'm going to divide by three and I'll project that the fourth month will be the average of the first three so based on this data my average or my projection for April will be 11 and two-thirds or 11.66 from which I would project 12 now you would take this same formula and you would eliminate January because it's not in that three month moving average and you would say February March and April to pro project you would use those averages to project May you would use March April and May to project June and so forth and so on now let's discuss the weighted moving average as I mentioned before this is not in your text uh, and this is most appropriate when a trend is definitely present and the older data is less important and that most recent data is expected to recur more frequently so as you can see by this formula the way that moving average equals the sum of the weight for a particular period times the demand for that period all over the sum of the weights I will show you an example shortly. On this slide, you'll see the example of a weighted moving average. As you'll see, this example is the exact same example that we use for the simple moving average, with the exception that we're applying weights. And we're applying the weights, higher weight, to the most recent month in the three month moving average. So, as you'll see from the top, we are giving the most recent month which in a three month moving average would be March, a weight of three, which simply says that we're, we believe that the results from April are three times more likely to look like the results of March. So this is what it looks like. In a three month weighted moving average, we've assigned a weight of three to the most recent month, March, and we multiply that number times the actual sales number. We assigned a weight of two, I believe it's only two times as likely. April is only two times as likely to look like February. So we assigned a weight of two to the month of February. And of course, then we assigned number one to the month of January. So we have the sum of the weights 
of the first three months and then we divide it by the total sum of the weights which is six instead of dividing by the number of months three and this gives us a weighted moving average or expected forecast of 12 and 1 6 so and we still, so which mean our forecast in this particular example will be the same it would still be 12 and of course you would take that same formula and apply it to May June and July as you see here below now exponential smoothing this is a sophisticated way of saying uh, this is a more systematic and more commonly accepted weighted moving average uh, it requires a smoothing constant now this smoothing constant ranges from 0 to 1 uh, which means that it's in a percentage form uh, and it's subjectively chosen and of course the, sub the subjectivity is based upon data that's known about that particular inventory that particular product that particular period of time so it, it, it will vary based on a number of factors uh, but it's, it's, it is not using insignificant data and one thing that's very strong about this particular uh, smoothing method is that it involves little record keeping of past data so you can apply a particular constant based on what happened over the last couple of months we'll look at an example next as you see here the forecast the methods formula uh, new for forecast equals old forecast plus the smoothing constant multiplied by actual demand minus the old forecast and we'll see it played off shortly so here's your example predicted demand for four Mustangs in this given month was 142 Mustangs that's the forecast the actual demand was 153 Mustangs. So that means that the variance is a positive 11. So that means the forecast manager or whoever predicted projected sales uh, was off by 11. The smoothing constant of 0.2 says that we believe there's only a 20% likelihood that the actual demand for the next month will look like the actual demand for the previous month so the whoever's forecasting believes that their forecast originally was pretty sound and that there was some irregularity that caused this shift in demand or this increase in demand and that is not really likely to happen again so let's see what it looks like so this in this formula we said that the previous forecast of 142 Ford Mustangs we're gonna take that previous forecast and we're gonna add it to the difference between actual and forecast and we'll multiply that number by the smoothing constant which is 0.2 or 20 percent so once we do that we have 142 which was the original forecast and because the irregularity happened we can't discount it but we can't give it as much weight either so we after we've done the math we see 142 plus 2.2 which gives you a new forecast of 144.2 which of course we round to 144 so our new demand for the next previous period maybe a month maybe a year whatever that period of time is would be a hundred and forty four cars when choosing a forecasting technique the reality is there's no single technique that works in every situation uh, some will be trial and error uh, others will be based on preference um, and the reality is that you want to find a technique that works and a technique that's going to be consistent 
for your type of business. Uh, so probably uh, to start with a simple moving average may be or a weighted moving average uh, may be may be appropriate uh, of some sort. Uh, a simple moving average, uh, a lot of times, unless there is no variability in your company, uh, may add little to no value. Uh, but some type assigning some type of weight based on some type of trend data may give more reality to your upcoming forecast. Uh, but there are other factors that you want to include. Historical data, new information, time needed to gather information, uh, and you want to look at the forecast horizon. You want to look at what's potentially coming, um, and then you know what has happened in the past that we think may happen again. So when you're choosing a technique, uh, you want to keep in mind that there are a lot of factors that can potentially affect which method you choose.